Dave. Hello, Deckers. Hello. 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 So, uh, Elaine, were you ever able to get a picture of those weird um, uh, vehicles? They weren't there. Oh, really? We went up to the bridge and we could see the land had been cleared and, you know, we could imagine <laughs> what you were talking about, but there was nobody there or no vehicles there. So you they're should... probably finished. They're, no, they, they run almost all day long. They run back and forth under the bridge, out, pick up sand, under the bridge, take it up to the plant. The run, they're like about every um, minute or so, there's a there's one of those big vehicles. So I don't know, maybe for some reason they were on lunch break or something. I don't, I don't know. Well, we, we thought of that and we, we went and did some other stuff and then we went back again and there was still nothing there. Still so. nothing. Yeah, what, what bridge? we were coming and, and the, the other day we were at the gravel uh, plant and um, Cheryl came driving by and we had a conversation right in the middle of the road. <laughs> and she told us Did about it. in the gravel plant? <clears throat> we photographed, uh, I was, you know, photographing them as they were working and um, they came over and talked to us and, you know, they were a little bit suspicious of what we were doing. And uh, <laughs> so we had to explain, you know, we were just taking pictures for ourselves. And the guy said, oh, okay, he was fine with that. And then another guy came over and we had to explain it all over again. But Probably not a good idea when. So Sh Cheryl, you, you're talking about the bridge over, uh, off of uh, Fox and Canyon on Tepesque, the one that goes over, okay. Yeah. 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 And under, if you stand on that bridge and look down, there are these monster Mad Max vehicles that are um, I don't look know, underneath like, the bridge. Thirty feet long. They're huge. That run back and forth, hauling sand back and forth under uh -huh. underneath that bridge. We'll have they to come back and look again. <laughs> so they take the sand over to that um, sand refinery or whatever you want to call it over there. Yeah, there's a cement plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Yep. And Elaine, what 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 did they say to you about? What, what, and where were you when you were? We were at the gravel plant, and they were just you know, they were moving with heavy equipment. And you were at the gravel plant, or you were on the side of it. Um, you know, we were because shooting through the fence. You know, just well because yeah. I was over, I was over there and um, uh, talked to the people, and um, they had me come back. Uh, when the boss was there, and he let me go in and make photos. Oh, really? Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, they they were telling us it was a federal plant, and well, and you know they were like we were photographing top uh, stuff or something. Well, look, that, that's a whole bunch of BS. Yeah. Well, but but in the end, they didn't tell us we had to leave. Right. Right. They just let us know they were. But if, if you want to go, were, if you want to go in, go over some time and and talk to uh, the woman I talked to was an assistant or something, and mm -hmm. uh, I explained that I was just interested, and she said come back. I came back. The guy was in his office, and I went to the office, and she uh, introduced me, and he said, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah. So it was interesting. We were just bored, and you know, we just go out and look for stuff, and. A lot of times it's, it's, you know, it's nothing, but we have fun just looking around and I've, uh, we have machines coming up, but those are definitely not going to be any competition for us. So we just, just, just remember your first amendment rights. Yeah. Oh yeah. I wasn't about ready to leave. In fact, I walked over to the gate and got closer and looked in and. I got real brave. <laughs> and it's Tony. Hey, it's Tony. Tony. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh she's having trouble getting in. <clears throat> yeah, trouble getting in. Yeah, the portal was too narrow. He couldn't slip through. That's what. <laughs> you have to hit the beam me in. But... Now, norm normally, I, I paste the link into the WebEx app. But this time I tried clicking the link and it kept asking me to put in my like name and password. Oh, oh. Screw that. Yeah. <laughs> so I pasted the link in and got in that way. 
you know. I usually just click in the, the email and get right in. Well, yeah, I've not had that problem before, but and anyway. might be because yesterday, last night, instead of closing the app, I accidentally logged out. But then I logged back. Is it? Whatever. Anyway, hello, Lynn. Nice to see you. Hello, Tony. Hello, there you are. You're moving around on the screen. <laughs> I'll be expecting a few more, yeah. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> just telling us about uh, you quit before he could fire you. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> tired before he could fire me. <laughs> oh, right, nice, nice he try. Always, be known. He kept quitting and I kept bringing him back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you remember. I got laid off once, <laughs> and then they couldn't cope, so they asked me to stay. <laughs> that took some working on, but we, we fixed that. Yeah, we fixed that. Yikes. Yeah, good to see you. I look forward to, um, you know, if ever COVID goes away, we can meet up for lunch. <clears throat> I know, that'd be nice. Yeah, I, gosh, I, you may have a, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Right? So what, what will that world be like? So, yeah, what would it well be? Looking forward to that. Just, just driving past everything. Just have to hope there's still restaurants around to go to. <laughs> there's that. Yep, exactly. Well, this afternoon we got takeaway burgers from um, Shaw's. First time I've had anything from Shaw's since they oh wow opened. How about that? Oh, their burgers are magnificent. Well, they're they're proper made burgers. They're not what. You know what I mean? I don't. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a burger from them. What's the name of the place? Oh, Shores. Oh, I know where that is. Yeah. yeah, Shores, the one that burnt down two years ago. Where, where's that located? Uh, on Broadway. Are they open again? Yes. Uh, yeah, but only for takeaway. They can't. Um, they can't yeah. have people inside. But I didn't. I didn't know if they were ever going to be able to recover after the fire. I'm yeah. glad that they're opening again. Yeah, they're all they're kind of open for north, takeaway now. That's uh, north, north Broadway or South Broadway? North. We'll north, north, okay. Broadway, yeah. Oh, it's south. not really North Broadway. It's it's south. Like, yeah, if, if you're past Main Street, it's north. Kind of near where Park comes south. in. It's, it's, park it's, comes into uh, Broadway. Stowe, okay. Stowe, kind of near the, uh, kind of near the railroad tracks. Uh huh. It's not. It's not past Maine, is it? No, it's it's close to the high Santa Maria High School, actually. Correct. Right, yes. near the high school. Yep. So that would that's not North Maine, I don't think. Where the um the car wash is across the street, the car wash. And but, they have a NK uh, restaurant there. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. And work as well. Yeah. It's right above Stoll, not too far off above yeah. Stoll. Okay. Yeah. I tell you, you know, when they before they burnt down, we had the uh, they do wonderful tri-tip with linguica, sausage, and um, wow. prime rib and stuff like that. Fantastic. I think this is the second time they've burnt down in the last they've, five the years. The second fire they've had, yeah. Yeah, they've burnt down before, but I think it was longer than five years ago. Yeah, that's quite a long time ago where they had extensive damage. And then about five years ago, I think they had a small kitchen fire that didn't. Yeah, the last time I heard they had a, a little fire because they got a proper open barbecue pit in, inside, you know. Mm -hmm. It's called Shore Burgers or just Shores? Shaw. 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 It's H A W. It's Shore. Shaw. Shaw. Oh, I know where it is. I know where it is. Yeah. It's that English accent. <laughs> right next to um, that restaurant. Um, yeah, I. I can't yeah. think of Rumbles. I know where you're talking about now. The pantry, yeah. Yeah, the pantry, exactly. Right next to that. Yeah. There's another restaurant that might, um, that's um, fairly good in Santa Maria, the uh, the Swiss. It's a family-owned business. Yeah, um, I've heard it's not very good. The Swiss? Mm. It's pretty good. The Swiss good. is good. I like that. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy their food. If Where's you that at? It, Johnny, you should try it. Where's that at? North Broadway. That one's North yeah. Broadway. That one is um liquor store. My wife and I go down there all the time to get the steak sandwich. We split it. And yeah. Really good. 
Yeah. We quite like um, before the lockdown, we went a couple of times to uh, Cool Hand Luke's, and that was pretty oh, good. I like that too. Yeah. yeah. A little pricey, but it's good. We go there all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Even during the lockdown. <laughs> anybody, anybody go to Chef Rick's? Um, I've been there, and um, the food is good, but it's way overpriced. That's an orchid, isn't it? No, it's um, kind of off of the, it's off of the the freeway that becomes Broadway. What at one thirty five or one thirty seven, whatever that number is. Thirty five. Yeah, one thirty five. And um, what's, the, what's the crossword? Across uh, road. It's, it's Foster. Foster. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of considered orchid. It's um. It, it's close to orchid. Yeah. What's yeah. it called? Chef it's, Ricks. Chef Ricks. Yeah. It used to be called the Jetty. Oh, okay. That's what I, yeah, I oh. didn't even notice the change. Yeah. I didn't notice the jetty. Okay. It's it like long Cajun long. food. Uh, I really but, like it, but it's real rich. Okay. Well, like I said, it's the food is good, but the, both the food and the wine are extremely overpriced, in my opinion. Well, maybe not extremely, maybe just very. <laughs> but it's your need. The jetty in Lumpo. Used to go there when I was doing when I had business there all the time. That fish place. It's okay. Yeah. That's a laundromat now. <laughs> it's the only business open over there. They still serve good burgers. Okay. Though. Folks, we're about um we're about uh, five, six minutes into uh past seven. Um let me just ask Greg, uh are we do we have most of the people that have accepted uh here on the meeting or well seeing only two people accepted yes <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to accept <laughs> we um the only person who's entered who we don't have signed in is frank trump okay all right are you we ready to roll in yeah i've been recording all along so all right <laughs> Thanks. I, um, so, uh, Lynn, it's uh, good to have you. We're going to do an intro introduction here in a minute. Um, just want to uh, call our uh, competition meeting to order. I'm the uh, president, Cheryl Decker. Um, and so, um, is Penny on the call? The Zoom? Yes. Yep. Yes, Penny. Um, just real quick, do you have any updates that um, you want? As far right. as uh, you know, anything more about the Yosemite trip or any other? Um, um, I haven't heard anything new at all. Um, my reservation still stands. And how about yours? Yeah, I, I mean, I have a hotel reservation. I just I can cancel it if they don't open yeah i'm waiting and seeing and hoping uh, that the february uh, trip will still go on did you have anything um, else planned not for february okay um we do have a couple things in march the lighthouse tour um hasn't been canceled yet and that's up to bob mihelic's group um, <coughs> out at the the San Luis uh, Lighthouse out of Avila. Um, and then the other thing is uh, a day trip up to um, uh, Pinnacles. Yeah, in April. And no, we oh, have that. Late in, March. What, late March. Okay. Is, is that the Trona Pinnacles? No, it's the. Up near King the, City. The Pinnacle Pinnacles by King City. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Where the condors and, are. Yeah, the condors. Um, okay. It should be a good time because the temperatures aren't crazy hot like they are in the summer. Um, and if we ever have any rain, we might have some flowers. Um, <laughs> it's late March. <laughs> hey, I think it's supposed to rain later this week, isn't it? Next week well, now. It is. Yeah, yeah next week. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. The, and, the, weather re uh, the weather report said definitely it's sometime in 2024 we'll have rain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that uh, meteorologist, Jim. <laughs> um, 
So, Alan, uh, you have a program uh, meeting coming up. Is there any information you want to convey about that? Uh, well, first, let me say my internet keeps coming in and out. But uh, uh, the meeting is going to be basically uh, bring in your, we want to see the books from uh, the January competition. And then uh, Penny wants, uh, Penny had, uh, we had some do it yourself field trips and we want to see if those results. And I forgot one, one was warm or something like that. Or was that the subject? Yeah. Anyway, there were whatever. Yeah. Whatever, whatever they are, I'll have a write up in the in the galleon. But that'll be the show and okay. tell. It's going to be all show and tell. It's going to be show and telling your photo books and uh, then individual images. That'll be February, March. That's too far in advance. Okay. So whatever you. So whatever you've been shooting, if you have anything new, would be fun to show. Or um, if you look at the topics, something about warm was for December. And then January was renewal. So if you have any old old stuff to follow the themes or just anything you want to show really uh, for the next meeting. Okay. Hey, uh, one, one quick thing, uh, Alan, um, do you want me to send you something for, for the galleon about um, how people can show their books virtually? Mm. Be excellent. Yes, please. Better because then I can get Flavio ahead of time. Right, right. Okay, I'll try to get that out to you in another. Great, day thanks. So. Okay. okay, Jim. That's okay. That's cool. Thanks. Idea. Okay. That would be great. We probably need to send that. I have Rosie send it uh, before the galleon, since the meeting is on the third. Um, well, well, I'd suggest you send both. You know, both, both, both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Send out by Rosie, and then also in in, in the galleon. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Put it on the website. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Well, let's get our competition started. And uh, Tony, um, you helped us to um, secure the judging of Lenwood. Would you like to introduce him? Yes, I certainly would. My friend and former colleague, Len Wood. Hey. Um, Len Wood's been a professional photojournalist in Santa Barbara for over 40 years. He worked as a staff photographer for the Santa Maria Times. Santa Barbara News Press, as well as freelance work for New York Times Associated mm -hmm. Press and others. He's won mm -hmm. awards from the National Press Photographers Association, California Newspaper Publishers Association, Associated <laughs> Press News Executive Council and Best of the West. Len lives in Lompoc with his wife, Kristen, a teacher in the county school system, and daughter, Becky. He also has two adult children, Katie and Joshua, who live in Solvang and Oxford. Oxnard, not Oxford, <laughs> or Oxford even, but Oxnard. Oh, <laughs> and with that, I'd uh, like to pass you over to Len. I don't know if you have a few words you want to say, Len. Um, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. I, I really enjoyed the last time I judged. I, I can't remember when it was, a couple of years ago, I think, something like that. But, you know, time is a strange thing these days. So, but yeah, it's good to be here. I'm, I'm not doing a lot of pictures right now. Just I, I've, I had to retire when the pandemic came on to take care of my daughter. But uh, I'm looking forward to the regular world re rejoining and getting back out and shooting a little bit more. So, but, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It'd be nice. I, it's like I don't. I, I really miss seeing people and interacting and stuff like that. And it's just not. Yeah. You know, but we all could tell that same story though. So, but it was uh, kind of strange rebuilding my equipment because I really didn't own anything. So, but I'm finally back to some sh sort of shooting form. But I really miss long glass that I had before with the times and with the yeah. new press too. So. We'll yes, see. I'm good, working good. on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we'll see. But uh, gosh, uh, looking through everybody's pictures, I was wildly impressed again. I didn't know what to expect. I judged a couple other competitions down south, and uh, you, you guys, you guys nail it. There's just some beautiful, beautiful images in there. So, so uh, well done. Keep up the good work. I, it's, it's. I always wondered what it would be like to, to have to be self motivated. You know, non. You know, where I just was totally interested in the photo, and that was the whole source of the image and stuff. And 
I'm just so impressed with the quality of work that you guys do just to do it. So that's awesome. So well done. Thank you, Lane. Yeah. From all of us, I say thank you. So are we ready to start? Yeah, let's start with Caller. You want me to go, Penny, or are you going to go? You go ahead. Okay. We're doing the run through. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, we're we're uh, going to run notes through down. first. We're going to, yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Our first image. This is titled Black and White in Color. So I really, really love this shot. The uh, I just love the whole high key look with the uh, the black and white birds and then just a tiny hint of color on the branch like this. So, so real cool with the, uh, the way the, uh, branch is sort of on a diagonal in there. If they were, if that was flat, not nearly the picture. So, um, do, uh, do you want me to go through how I scored each category on this or, or uh, should I talk these up first? We generally just do accumulated score. Okay, cool. Yeah, really, really love the shot. Really big impact. Uh, it grabbed me straight out. It's it was fun to see that is the first image of that I saw. Oh, we want you to, to give the accumulated score for each individual image. Oh, oh no, uh, accumulated score of nineteen. Was I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Uh, one nine nineteen. One nine. Thank you. Do not approach wildlife number three. Um, before we go too far, I, I've got to admit the titles confused me on this since there's a do not approach wildlife one, two, and three. But I, I got over that by uh, I was able to sort it out. So, um, I love the texture of this. Um, I think it's it's uh, interesting for uh, just that soft light that it is. Um, and like a lot of great photos, it, uh, it asks a lot of questions, you know, with with uh, why are these boots out in the middle of this area like this and a little hint of snow there. Um, I just love the the warm tonality of it like that. That was that was fun and you know good crop on that. Really, really, really. Um, easy to read photo. Uh, cumulative of uh, 15, one five. 
delicate? Let's see. Um, it, it's just a really soft feeling on on this photo. Um, I'm, I, I got to admit, my prejudice is always about um, photojournalism with people. That's usually where my biases go on this. But this has some really nice appeal because of the way the light spotlights and then the colors just sort of fade away on that. So, I mean, this this could have been a just exposure disaster, but it really works well. I, I like it a lot. I like this off center crop. I just like the way the colors work and stuff and still being a real soft, you know, soft, you know, I don't want to say soft focus, but um, a, a soft uh, feeling type of image. So I gave this one a cumulative of 16 and six. Kelp. I, I I guess I'm a sucker for underwater pictures. I just kind of like something different, and this is this is wildly different. On it. And just the tonality is just real neat. The way we get the sort of softer grays in the background, and just you know the warm stuff like that. So it it would be fun to do some underwater photography. Um, the uh, I like the way that it's a squared out crop. I do wonder if it were a little bit more vertical, what that might add to it. But um, all in all, I really like the picture. It's it's just got nice light to it. Uh, having never done underwater stuff, really, it just it's I imagine it's a whole different set of challenges to get decent light and color out of things. But uh, I gave that one a 17, one seven. Lone tree. Uh, at first glance, this was a uh, an image that I've kind of I don't know I, I don't want to say come to expect on that because it's it's sort of a familiar familiar image with that blue sky and then the warm warm trunk like that but really pretty all the same real uh you know just real graphic real real um, straight up shot like that um, I kind of suffer from wanting things to be more dramatic I mean maybe that's just my my bias on this stuff. So I wonder. I like the sand, but I wonder if a slightly lower angle might have might have pumped up the drama a teeny bit. But having said that, not all photos need to be screaming dramatic, you know, photojournalism type of images. This one's this one's real pretty for that light, for just that you know, just it's it's sort of a comforting picture. I like this. Um, I gave this a one six sixteen. This is titled, I'm probably going to slaughter it, Minicuddle, Minicuddle. Let's see. Sorry, i got to refer to my notes here. Um, really pretty photo with, with these really distinct graphic lines like this. The, uh, um, I, 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 I spent a lot of time looking at this picture, trying to, to you know, mentally, I, it's, again, another bias of where I, I, I'm always wondering, how could you improve a shot? How could something be different? And I, I was wondering if that branch were in a different location, like, you know, if you stood a little higher, so the branch were intersecting the waterfall a little bit more, but I just don't know. I mean, the the color works real well, the way it pops in the uh, above the branch like that and stuff. I, I I, I struggle with this one a lot. It's it doesn't grab me that hard the way a lot of um, landscape shots might, but um, I, I still I still really liked it. So I gave this a one six sixteen. Out of service. Um, this. Fun picture here. The uh, the gray tones really support that out of service theme on that. The I just like this. It just looks like a real found sort of picture on the on the look. Um, I'm always wondering how a, a crop might help that. If if maybe the roof were out, if if it might be a little bit stronger. You know, I I kind of play back and forth. I figure if the roof were gone, that maybe uh, um, it might put a little bit more emphasis on that that gas pump and give it a little more context for the out of service theme like that. But still, I, I, I like the shot. 
Um, I gave this a 16, one six. Peekaboo. This shot cracks me up. I just, I, I love the light, the way the light works on this and all that. I, I'd love to know how much post-processing was done on it because I don't think it would be a ton, but maybe, but whatever, it still works. The, the catch light and the dog's eyes, um, it, and you know, the, what I found on further examination was just how, how well the focus works on this because you go through it and pretty much the, Dog's eye, dog's face is what's in focus, and it really kind of brings brings everything back in. And again, that catch light on the dog's eye really, really makes it jump. But though, I really enjoy the quality and and tonality of this. Um, I gave this an eighteen one eight. Sunbathing beauties. Um, I found this to be a, a really nice moment for us landlocked quarantining types. So it's nice to see that there's some world out there still. I, I'm hoping it was taken recently so I can <laughs> sort of mentally vacation like that. But having said that, the light works. That's that's why this this works. I've I've shot a bunch of these in the gray, and obviously they don't work when they're gray. So, but the the light works. It's still a nice moment like that. Um. Gave this a 15, one five. Sunset at Montano de Oro. Um, I like this picture a lot. I, I, I don't wanna try to reinvent photos when I'm looking at them, but it's hard not for me on this because I'm kind of wondering if there wasn't, if it was brought down or brought up a little bit somehow in, in post because it seems like there's a lot of a lot more contrast in the on the outsides than there is in the middle, and I don't know. It just feels like it more of that. Is you know you, you get a comfort. You're cutting out on us. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? You've cut out on your, uh, oh. your audio is oh, sorry. cutting um, in and 16. out. 16. Oop, oop. Well, that's not good. Uh, I gave it a one 16. Six? One six. Yes. Okay, I got it. The Watchman at Sunset. I mean, th this looks like a real poster moment. I mean, it, you add a location on on the black border on either end, and suddenly, if you know, if you've got a poster for. Uh, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not familiar with the that peak. I assume with a name like that, it probably is a, a, a iconic spot. Um, I, I like it a lot. Um, it feels. Like the uh, the bottom half is pretty bright compared to the way the uh, the sunlight's hitting the cliffs. And I kind of wonder if if the bottom were a little bit darker, if it might not be a teeny bit more dramatic because of the way that that light jumps on the back. So it was it, it was tempting for me to take a look at in in some of my stuff to see if it might it might come down a bit. But having said that. It's a gorgeous shot. It's, I mean, it, it, it should be published. It's, it's beautiful stuff. Um, I gave that a 17, one seven. Do not approach wildlife number one. So a real nice moment here. I, lo I love the little pop of color, the way the, uh, the flower comes out like that. That's really makes it in real, Real soft light, any harder light than this, it probably wouldn't work at all, but it it, it does because it's that. Um, if I had any any question about it at all, it feels like there's a little bit more on the left in the bottom than maybe it needs because I'd like to come back in a little bit more. I, I don't think that the, uh, um, I can't really 
point at anything here, but there's there's some grass on the uh, some lighter grass on the left that I, I wonder if that goes out. I I'm looking a little bit more at the at the, the baby deer in there that we might might refocus it just a tiny bit. So, but a, a pretty picture. I like it. That was uh, sixteen one six. Frozen petals. It, it, I tried to look at all these before looking at the titles of them, and I had no idea what was going on here. But um, gosh, it's it's this really cool, abstract kind of compelling photo. I like the way that the the color works, and then the frozen part. Obviously, that's I guess those are water bubbles or something in there, something like that. But really pretty. It's just um, not the normal, not the picture I normally see. So it's I, I'd love to know the story behind this. So real real fun to see. Um, I gave this. Make sure I didn't leave anything out. Um, I know. Uh, I gave it a one seven seventeen. Into the fog. I kept I kept coming back around on this photo a lot to try to figure on this. I really like the framing on it. the The way it's the the verticality of it and the way the uh, the tones just give you that impression of distance the way it falls away um i i alternately like and don't like the uh the bird at the very top you know the gray bird instead of the black bird in the middle but i don't know i right now i'm in the in the mode of where i like it and i i think that's nice the one deal that i do struggle with a bit is it it's a little bit high key it feels like that this the white sky might be just a little bit too hot to to set up the fog. I know some fog looks that way, especially probably out on a coastal view like that where the sun starts to pop a little bit, but it just feels like that if if that were just down a, you know, a, a step or two, it might it might make the whole picture work a little bit stronger, but um, I still like it a lot. It's uh I give that a 15, one five. Muskegon Lighthouse. Um, I really like this photo that that red lighthouse really makes it jump. It just has some real nice sort of winter feel to it within that the uh, um, the way the grass is still that warmish color instead of the gray across the uh, the bottom one. So just it's really a poster print. It, it would again a real an image that should be published. It's, I, I had wondered about reframing almost where maybe a little bit left less on the right but I, I i keep saying no i just it's 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 really a nice shot is it and it's 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 well cropped this way um i give this an 18 one eight no mail for b i i laughed out loud when i saw this because i I just enjoy the humorous take on that. Not a real complicated image, but it's it's well executed. It's uh, you know all technically there. I, I, what happened to be? I, who knows? But the uh, it's it's still fun. It's 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 a, a good picture. Um, it, very simple, but but well well executed and a good good eye to find that picture. Um, I gave that a sixteen one six. Ready to go. Um, it's just super light in color on this. The uh, the diagonal banner really gives it a lot, a lot more drama and sort of a you know reality to it that that it's you know if you shot it anywhere else it wouldn't work. Obviously that's not a street motorcycle either, but just really really nice nice quality under what I'm sure were super challenging circumstances and stuff, but. But yeah, you, you you can feel it and hear it there. That's that's just a neat picture. Um, I gave that an eighteen one eight. Solo. I, I just really like this picture, and this is not a picture I kind of the kind of picture I normally like. It's uh, the the texture in it is just really stunning between the way the uh, the shadows work and then the colors of the tables and the, the everything in it it's, it's just a, 
I just really enjoy looking at this picture. It's it it's the shadows are open up enough to where I can see into the detail. If it were any more contrasty, I don't I don't know that it would work as well on this. Um, I, I I just want to spend some time looking at this picture. It, it's got a whole nice feeling to it, and there's just this whole reality to it there. I like a lot. Um, I gave this an 18, one eight. Standing in awe. Um, nice light on this. Um, it it does well to really emphasize the size of the tree the, with the people. Um, you move up closer, the people get big, the tree gets small. You move farther back, you don't see the people. It's just, I, I think that's well done. I think a, a maybe a little bit lower angle might have brought that up even more so. But having said that, I um, it's just got a real smooth feel to it, real real, you know, quality look with the uh, the way the the light is just just real even, and uh, it, you know you don't see that with tree tree shots like this, but it's very pretty. I liked it a lot. Uh, I gave it a one six sixteen. Sunridge grapevines. Um, real pretty light. Uh, the uh, obviously with the way the sunburst works like that really complements the color in the leaves on the vines. Um, I if some of the bottom might not help it, you know. If you see the one sign that says, uh, uh, I guess it's the Sunridge about in the left left third if if that were the bottom of the frame i don't think that would hurt it and it might force you back up to see that sunburst a little bit more so having said that um real pretty shot uh, uh i think it's well done um i gave it a 16 one six west temple zion sunrise Um, I, um, I mean, I love the picture. I just, it, it's just cool. It's something I've always aspired to do with some of the more astro type look landscapes like this and stuff. I, I might be a little bit, um, at the mercy of, uh, monitor calibration and stuff. Um, on my screens, it looks, it's pretty dark. It was, it was difficult for me to see the mountains the first take through. And I moved the computer to a different place and yeah, there's, there's some, there's some real cool stuff. Um, I don't know if if exactly what I'm seeing in the sky, some of it, I, I, I am worried that my monitor is not supporting it quite as well. But gosh, what I want to see is it's it's a gorgeous picture. Really, I really liked like what I could see the uh, um, just real fun stuff. Um, I give it an 18, one eight. Do not approach wildlife number two. Uh, this is as close as I want to get to bears. So I, bears and I have a long history, but we won't talk about that tonight. Um, the uh, yeah, real, real pretty light on this. I'm not quite certain of the circumstances on this, but uh, like I say, a little closer than I'd like to uh, get to a bear, but it just really an interesting study. Uh, a great portrait if you can call up a, a portrait of a wild animal that might want to kill you a portrait but um i like it a lot yeah uh, i gave this a uh, 16 one six peter cottontail uh, real interesting light and composition i think the way the square frame with the the rabbit down in that that lower corner um really sort of makes the rabbit look more vulnerable and really pushes that the look of the light. Um, the rabbit really dumps in terms of the, the way the light makes it pop right there. So I'm sure that it has a lot of function of where it is in relation to the uh, to the light source. Everything else probably um, falls off pretty dramatically in terms of light values out of that. But um, I gave this a 17, one seven. Cell point. Um, it's really a nice moment um, with the way the way the, the the sun is setting there, just everything like that. Um, 
I, I'm a terrible judge of of technical stuff on this. It looks a teeny bit HR HDR to me, you know, just a little maybe too much range in there almost. It sometimes it's um, I, I'm terrible at HDR, so it always seems like I get too much tonality in these things as opposed to just having something, you know, where the shadows darken up a bit more to make something a little bit more dramatic. But, you know, I like it. It just, it feels a little bit flat to me because of, for whatever reason. So that might be completely real in terms of that, but um, I don't know. I just don't, it just feels like it needs to be a, you know, a, strengthened up a bit in terms of maybe the blacks or something. Uh, excuse me, I gave that a 16, one six. Sea dragon. All right, really nice shot with the color and the waves. It's just like, wow, that, you know, the gold across the waves and just the way the whole thing sets up. Um, I don't know if that's what that rock was called or if that's the title the photographer gave to it, but just neat stuff with the way the waves work. Um, the only only thing that I came up with uh, in terms of any kind of question at all was there's that black line across the bottom from, uh, I guess, other uh, light falling. I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like if that's gone, uh, my eye goes a little bit more to that contrast of the 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 rock versus the wave area. Otherwise, I'm just I'm kind of pulled back to the bottom again. But gosh, what what a what a cool cool picture. I gave that a 17, one seven. Spooner's Cove. Let's see. Um real pretty moment. Can't beat those clouds, those uh Another photographer friend and I, we always we always tell each other whenever we get get these clouds and these photos, these 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 puffy stringy clouds. We don't we don't know what they're called. He, he my my friend does, but I don't know what they're called. But but it's always a, a highlight to get him in the picture. Um, again, it might be a teeny bit more like um, open shadows than I'd like to see on that. It just feels almost like two pictures where the sky is just this really dramatic thing, and then the the, I don't know. There's real strong blacks in the the bottom part, so I think they do match better. But it just uh, the the tones just don't quite line up for me the way the way I would expect expect it to look. In a way, I guess I, I don't know. Uh, um, I gave this a sixteen one six. Towering walls. Um, great angle on this one. Just that that lower look up, really. In, in when you hear the title on that, you you understand what was what what they were going on. Um, I, I did play a little bit of a, a game with maybe there's just I I I'm really notorious for adding too many elements to a picture, and I kind of wonder if either the the palm tree or the sign in the bottom might be too much. You know, maybe maybe you moved more to the the front of of the building so that sign that if you're if you're trying to say something with the circular sign maybe that becomes a little bit more prominent or you just crop that out all together go with the palm tree as your element and then suddenly you know you've got these you know the soaring building but I, it just feels like maybe the sign or the palm tree one of them maybe it's got to go to make it a super strong shot still like it i think the light really works on it um, I gave that a uh, fifteen one five. Walking at sunset. Yeah, really, really nice moody shot. Just real, real sweet feel to this. Um, the way the sky sets up, the reflections in the water, everything, every bit of it. The separation of the walker versus the background. Sometimes those things merge a little bit too much, but. Not this time. Real, real pretty. Just real, I really like that. This, this is you know really an evocative type of picture where it just really has a nice feel to it. Um, I gave this a seventeen one seven. Whale and birds. Uh, real nice moment. 
Um, it, it's just, it's well framed. I like the, I, I, I for the most part, like the crops on this and all. Um, yeah, it's uh, the kind of the nature of, of this sort of photojournalistic moment. You're really at the mercy of what the birds are up to. And I think half the birds are perfect and the other half, I can't quite figure out what's going on. So you're a little bit mercy of it. Um, but I, I see some sort of what I assume is spray from the whale in that, that middle center area. So that might have been the, the moment that where the, the photographer was looking for with the, uh, the birds. And I, I don't know. It, it adds some depth and tonality to have that that spray in there, but the, the birds sometimes eh, I don't know. I, I just don't know. The birds are the only thing keeping me from really raving about this photo. So which isn't really fair. Um, but on this one, I gave it a uh, sixteen one six. Okay. Um, we have a few toys to break. Um, we, we need to look at number eight, which is peekaboo. And Muskegon Lighthouse, number 15. Number 17, ready to go. Number 19, uh, solo. Uh, number 21, West Temple Zion Sunrise. Okay, and make sure I got them all. From those, we need to pick a second place, a third place, and two honorable mentions. Okay. Um, uh, shall I just run through? Um, yeah, I just need to know which one you would like to pick for second place. Uh, for second place, um, solo, the uh, the t uh, chair and table shot number eighteen. Okay. For third place, um, ready to go number seventeen. That would be the uh, the motorcycle. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we get two honorable mentions this month. Uh, I like um, Peekaboo, number eight, okay. and um, uh, where'd it go? Uh, number 15, the lighthouse. Okay. So, I had two other honorable mentions, but I'll, I won't, I won't. I won't well, we get one honorable mention for every 10 images. And oh, since okay. we're over 20, we got two wow. honorable mentions this month. Well, well done. Nice so picture. we are ready. Okay, this is black and white in color by Frank Trump and our first place winner. Yay, Frank. Nice, nice shot. Thank you. Do not approach wildlife number three by Ed Powell. I like the effect that. That's funny, Ed. <laughs> This is Kit by Penny Powell. Pretty Penny. Nice. Thank you. Kelp by Chuck Ubley. Lone Tree by Rosie Brancoli. Manac Cuddle by Tony Martindale. How do you say that, Tony? Made a cuddle. And a cuddle, okay. <laughs> cuddle. <laughs> right the first time, I guess. <laughs> Out of Service by Alan Upshaw. Peekaboo and one of our honorable mentions by Larry Decker. Very nice. Where you go, Larry? Bathing Beauties by Jeannie Sparks. And that was during a uh, pandemic. It was just a couple months ago. Went on a whale watching tour, and that no was fair. On the nice. Thank you. <laughs> Sunset at Montano de Oro uh, by Gregory Dabna. 
The Watchman at Sunset by Cheryl Decker. Pretty. Very pretty. Not Approach Wildlife Number One by Ed Powell. Frozen Petals by Elaine Calvert. Into the Fog by Frank Tomp. Muskegon House by Larry Decker. And our second honorable mention. No Mail for B by Penny Powell. <laughs> That's funny, Penny. Yes. Like that. To go and our third place by Chuck Ubley. Air pollution. You make Chuck. Solo and our second place winner by Gregory Dabna. Well done, Greg. Thank you. Standing in awe by Rosie Brancasio. <clears throat> Sunridge Grape Vines by Jeannie Sparks. West Temple Zion Sunrise by Cheryl Decker. Do Not Approach Wildlife Number Two by Ed Powell. <laughs> Is that a, a natural history museum, Ed? That's a taxiderm. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's what I thought. So is the uh, the deer shot. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Safe bears. Well done. Okay. I don't. Uh, they were, I think, at a visitor center at uh, Yellowstone, I believe. Okay. <laughs> well, you did. You got your wildlife at Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they they, they, I reckon they weren't really that great shots, but it could have been fun. They still managed to tear up your boots. That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Peach Cotton Tail by Penny Paul. Sail Point by Larry Decker. Sea Dragon by Elaine Calvert. It does look like a dragon. It does. Well, it, the rock, I don't think, is called that normally, but I thought that with the combination of the water, it looked kind of like a dragon. Yeah, it does. I thought it looked like a chess piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Of course to me. <laughs> like a knight. Yeah. Knight yeah. in salty water. <laughs> <laughs> this is Spooner's Cove by Gregory Doudna. Nice shot, Greg. Nice, right. pretty. Where? Towering Towering Walls by Rosie Brancasio. Walking at Sunset by Jeannie Sparks. You really captured it, Jeannie. Yeah. Really pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Nice. <clears throat> Whale and Birds by Chuck Ubley. That's it. And that's it, yes. It's nice work. Nice, everybody. Nice. Oh. <laughs> that, that, well, real quick, the flower that was frozen was my um, COVID project. Uh, since oh. we couldn't go out, I just kept freezing flowers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, wow. hey, hey, Greg, how many do we have in this? Ten. Uh, can we can we take a like a five minute break? Sure. Okay. Cheryl, your um, West Temple Zion sunrise. On my monitor, I can see all the stars and all and sh detail in almost all the shadows. We well, could at home too. Yeah, I could at home as well, but I'm looking on my on a laptop that we have, and I couldn't see any of them. So it's so weird. They yeah, it's them. it's it's monitor dependent and how well calibrated it is. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's that's kind of what I was guessing because it feels like it's all there, but 
The monitor just doesn't support that. That the darker. Well, I, you know, I've got a more expensive, higher end monitor, and I calibrate it every week. So. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. Chuck. <clears throat> Cheryl, wasn't that wasn't that the moonrise? Well, maybe it was moonrise. Oh, that could have been, huh? Yes, it yeah. was moonrise. Moonrise. Okay. I thought, I thought the, the title said, uh, I believe it said sunrise. Yeah, I, was, I labeled it wrong. Yeah, okay. Penny, if you're going to do this, uh, the monochromes, number 10, there's no A in front of the title. Okay. That I got a note that said it was court of the conifers. Yeah. Yeah. The the photo is actually labeled that in in here, but for some reason on my uh, art I put an A in there. Okay, you're making things up. Well, we have a lot of images to keep track of this this month. I I mean, it's nice to have so many images. On, you know, on Sunday night, <laughs> all of yeah. them. Yeah. Girl board. <laughs> I can imagine the the chore it is. <laughs> and for some reason, Chuck's keep going to my spam folder. Yeah, that's why I emailed you. It's like, okay, I haven't heard from you. <laughs> well, yeah, I tell everybody if I if I don't tell you, I got them. Moment to ask. I'm back. Okay. Oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> All right. Let's. Start. Are we ready? Ready. Mute again. Yeah. All right, we're going to do a step. Okay, our first image. The title on this one is Blending In. Um, I, all I used to do was black and white, and now it just seems like a completely lost thing to me. So it's just really fun to uh, to see all these pictures. To be honest with you, it's, it makes me want to makes me want to try black and white a little bit more again. Um, you know, just it, just such a different universe. Um, this one um, probably would have been a completely different look in in color. Um, the I think the one deal that that works against it is probably that upper left part where the the tones drop into darkness right there. It, I don't think it helps that that blending in thought quite so much. Um, yeah, I think a crop on that type of thing probably you really end up with a little bit more of that, you know, of a little bit cleaner theme that might um, might support the whole image a little bit better. So um, on this, I gave it a uh, I, that was a fifteen one five. Car ferry as seen from Vaporetto. So. This looks like a film shot from D Day to me. I, it's awesome. I, I just I, I I love the real gritty look to the the way the sky sort of gets all crunchy like that. It's just kind of a cool thing. I'm sure that the uh, you know it's it's probably a filter. I'm not 100% with these, but uh, I, I just really like the quality of black and white. The the image the way it looks like this. Um, uh, I gave this a one eight eighteen. Laycock Abbey window. It's, there's just a real soft quality to, to this. I, I just really like the look of the whole picture, particularly the way the uh, 
the wall turns completely back. It just, just what, what a super shot. It's just real fun to look at. Um, I, I was mentally playing back and forth with the oblique view like this. If it were straight on, it might be more dramatic, but that's not necessarily what the photographer's goal is, I'm sure, on that. But I, I, that's just, you know, the, the idea of trying to brainstorm around some of the pictures like this. But I, I really like the picture a lot. Um, I gave this a 17, one seven. Looking up. You know, I, I've, I've tried to shoot similar pictures to this before, and they never quite work because they're so dependent on how everything lines up that if you don't get them framed correctly, they you you just start doing a measuring game of well, well that's a little bit off, or I didn't get the angle quite right, or something like that. This is an interesting take on that with this crop. I, I'm I'm not. I've gone back and forth again on this one too. I'm not. 100% on the crop, but I don't, I don't, I don't love it. I don't hate it. I, I'm, I'm just completely undecided about it. I, I guess if I wanted to be super strong about it, I probably would have taken even more off the tops. So those vertical lines um, were were pretty flat instead of starting to curl out again. But I still like it. I, it's it's a picture I've I've tried to shoot before. So I gave this a 15, uh, one five. Moro Rock. The uh, it's probably a little too contrasty for me. Just a little, little too uh, um, a little bit too high contrast. Um, I, I, it kind of makes me wonder because I, I don't know if that's a fog bank off on the top left or what, but the grayness of it just sort of of slips a little bit to me right there. I, I don't know. Um, I looked at it in a real small thumbnail, and I, I just, it feels like the, it's the image is, it's a nice image, the way that your reflections work, the way everything's there, but I, I just think that the treatment maybe just doesn't work quite as, quite right for me. Um, I give this a 14, one four. Hotel sidewalk. Um, just super graphic. This just in nice technique too. I black and white when you get those those deep gray sky like that, the where the blue sky turns like that, and you end up with some other those not quite white tones. It's just I, to me that's that's really pretty black and white work. It's just old zone system view camera stuff that I just uh, really uh, I miss this stuff. It's just real pretty. The lines are real nice. Um, it's got some some different elements in there that that add some some fun pieces to it that sort of repeat where you get that planner in the lower left that repeats the shape of the windows and it's just it, it was just a fun picture. It was nice nice thing to see and it black and white just really makes it work like this. Um, I gave this a sixteen one six. Lake Conti. Um, kind of broke there. If yeah, the uh, um, just just a, a neat image from this. Just a really striking shot. This type of street work like this. Um, I, you know, I can guess where it is, but I can't really on that. There's just all kinds of fun stuff. I. I I assume that it's filtered, obviously, and not not some um, uh, you know antique treatment on on a, on a photo, just because of the way the uh, you know the yellows break out of this way. It gets a little sepia-ish like this, but um, I just I, I really like the look of it. It's got a lot of details in it. Um, it'd be fun just as an exercise for me to see what it looked like without a filter, but maybe it just gets kind of mundane at this. This this way really, it makes it a little more timeless. This feels like it could have been shot any time almost, except for some of the images in those windows. Um, I give this a 17, one seven. Siren of the Sea. Um, 
think good comp composition. I like the photo. Um, to me, the frame kind of overwhelms the image on that. Um, maybe the blue as well, but I, it's just it's hard for me to see the picture for the frame in a way. So I don't know. It, it having said that, I've got a couple things on my wall that have deep frames on it, but they're you know 30 inch prints, so you, you get a little more room to work around the frame a bit more. But um, um, I like the picture. Maybe the frame's a little too strong for my taste, though. So. Um, I gave this a 15, one five. Oh, recall number six AM. Uh, boy, Jeepers. Uh, yeah, my biases are showing on the photojournalism type of stuff. Um, you know, if you want to talk impact, probably this one. Uh, kind of a hard picture to look at because of the impact. Um, if you, if this were a picture of a whole person, if the, we saw the person up top, you probably wouldn't even see that missing shoe and, you know, the horrible situation this is in. So, gosh, I, I mean, so many questions come up when you see a picture like this, you know, what's, what's this story? What is this? So, um, you know, real true street photography, real, you know, quite a statement, quite a moment. Um, you know, street photography isn't perfect on this. I, I don't have a chance to line up stuff. I, I do get stuck a little bit in that bare pavement in the foreground. But having said that, that's a really silly question, frankly. Um, wow, quite a picture. Yeah, probably there are a couple pictures that really stuck with me out of the out of the whole competition, and this was one of them. Um, I gave this a 19.19. Art of the conifers. Um, once again, another another nice, um, just soft feeling photo. It just has this, you know, just sort of sweet quality of the light poking through there, and and I, I like the fact that there's no no dominant black or no, no dominant white that just makes it. It's just this kind of you know, soft feeling gray picture like that. I, I wondered about maybe a little bit less ground, but I, I don't know. I mean, it all works. It just, it, you get that lower third with the way the, the horizon sets up and it, I, it, it, it works with or without that crop. So I, 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 I like this picture a lot. Um, I gave this a, uh, what was I, uh, one six, so 16. Okay, we, um, are doing pretty good. We have, um, two to look at for third and honorable mention. And that is number three, Laycock Abbey window. And seven, Le Conte. So that'd be th for third and honorable mention. Um, I'm going with uh, Le Conte as number three. And the window mm -hmm. is number, is the honorable mention. So okay. both are. Yeah, it's that real tight. Nice shots. Nice shots all around. Okay, we're ready for the run through. Blending in by Frank Trump. Car Ferry as seen from Vaporetto um, in second place by Jim McKinnis. Looks like a World War II shot. Exactly. <laughs> Laycock Abbey Window, an honorable mention by Tony Martindale. Very cool, Tony. Very sharp. Looking Up by Cheryl Decker. Moro Rock by Alan Upshaw. Hotel Sidewalk by Alan Upshaw. 
Pretty, very pretty. Yeah, nice image, Alan. Yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me a little bit of uh, Lee Friedlander's work. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, Le Conti in third place by Jim McKinnon. Sorry, people would make me motion sick. <laughs> <laughs> Iron of the Sea by Tony Martindale. Total Recall number 6 a.m. First place by Jim McInnes. Good job, Jim. Story behind that one, Jim. That's a yeah, dogs. Um, this was uh, I spent about a year down in LA on Skid Row, and um, this. Um, is it, the reason it's called Total Recall is that bench that he's sitting at the bus stop had a big advertisement Total Recall for the movie, and um, uh, th this guy was sitting there for th three or four days. He didn't move, and every every time I went by, he was there. And um, I think you can see why he was there. He wasn't too mobile. Um, yeah. So um, I used a long lens, a two hundred millimeter lens on this, and. Uh, made that photograph it was it was in black and white takes away some of the color that makes it even more difficult to look at mm. it's a very sad image yeah it is yeah. yeah and he just disappeared i didn't i've never seen him again wow mm. yeah well done and, and this is a court of the conifers by elaine calvert I like that, Elaine. Nice contrast. Thank you. Yes, I'd like it too. Okay. <clears throat> well, there's some great photos. Yeah, some fun things to see. Yeah. Tony, I like the way your uh, photo of your waterfall, how the limb actually framed that building cottage in the background yes yes the cottage is a holy well you know where the spring comes out of the right. ground yeah okay. well you can always tell tony's photos by the titles <laughs> the names of the places i took them <laughs> that's what i meant <laughs> you can never pronounce them they're english words and it was shot on a two and a quarter square um slide film Oh, wow, wow. By Mamiya, you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, the siren of the sea is a cyanotype. So that's basically the emulsion is painted on watercolor paper. So that is the frame. That is not really a frame. You just, you get a sheet of watercolor paper, you paint that emulsion on, you expose it with ultraviolet light through a negative, And that's what you get. Of course, if you're tidier painting the back, nice. Painting oh, that's cool. the ocean on, you get less background. <laughs> but I just slapped it on with a brush like that, you know. <laughs> um, I'm wow. kind of into alternative processes. I've been doing more of it. And, uh, so that is a cyanotype, you know, invented in 1800. <laughs> yeah. And incidentally, hey, um, I'm sure uh, most of you know Laycock Abbey is where Henry Fox Talbot's home was. Right. You know, the inventor of photography, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, Glad you wow. told us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Lynn, I was going to say something. Um, my None of my photos have fil or use filters, but they, they do use, um, I do use, uh, uh, texture layers that I put over it, so it's sort of the same thing, I guess. But it's but it's but it, but it's not really um, same thing, only different. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that uh, Le Conti. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I... Go ahead. Uh -huh. what, what, yes, um, I a little bit. The, the internet broke up on me. Just a second. Wait, okay. Well, you're well, talking well, about Le Conti. Yeah, uh, Le Conti. Um, that had a, a, a texture layer on it, but also I used a. Um, Lookup table, color lookup table on it. That uh, that. Oh, interesting. Ch change change the tonality. Oh. Nice effect. Really pretty. That's cool. 
that has a real neat feel, feeling to it. Thanks. This is monochrome. And Chuck, is, did you photograph that kelp through your um, the the, um, the bucket that you showed us? Yeah, I did. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Cut a hole. It's underwater camera. Yeah, right. A acrylic uh, piece of acrylic on the bottom of the bucket, but I'm not the kayak and just put it in the water. Put my camera in the bucket. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. Chuck, why do you make the a picture of the motorcycle? That was at Irwindale Raceway down in Los Angeles. Uh, my daughter wanted to race her Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> so I took her there and it was interesting shooting it, but she was all geared up to go fast and she went about three way speed. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah, I'm going 65, Bonnie. It's kind of like, I'm not really pushing the car. <laughs> uh, what was that? Was that that was pretty tough. Yeah, was that light pretty hard right there? Or? It was, uh, was that, you know, it, it started uh, just before dark and then it got dark and they had some lights on, but yeah, it was, it was kind of, it was what, a little challenging. What was and that in a, was that in a tunnel or something or because it looked No, it was uh, just, they had a drag strip there and um, uh -huh. during the bleachers and the motorcyclist was ready to you know, go and I guess either spinning his wheels or doing something but causing all the smoke and everything. But mm. they had, you know, anybody who wanted to could drag race. And mm. um, so they had that motorcycle. They had some old uh, Indian motorcycles from like 1906, um, a bunch of cars. It was my, pretty interesting. My, uh, my, my mother used to ride an Indian motorcycle. Yeah, my great grandmother used to also. We used to talk about going down to San Diego on the dirt roads with her hubby. <laughs> T. E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, used to write. Yeah. <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia used an Indian horse. Yeah. <laughs> A camel, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, where was that tree that you photographed? That was a gorgeous tree. Um, it was in South Carolina. Okay. And I can't remember the name of it. And I was going to look it up before the competition in case somebody asked me. But it's a famous tree uh, in South Carolina. That's, yeah. You, I mean, it has so many people under it. But oh, yeah. It was it huge. Just, the tree was just huge. Yeah. Mm. Huge. That is a Quercus Virginia Alice. It's a live East Coast live oak, and they live to be about four hundred years old. Wow! Oh, oh, wow! That's amazing. I had an elementary school teacher That's like great. that. Oh. <laughs> she was four hundred. You're you're beginning to look like that. Right. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel like it too. Four, four hundred years old is younger than Ed. <laughs> oh my God. Hey Ed, Ed, have you ever thought of braiding your beard? Yes. Cornrow. Also, there you go. Have the Yosemite Sam look here. <laughs> now you just look like That's a walrus. Come off pretty soon. I'm I say not. Now actually. you just look like a walrus. Actually, Ed, it's so long you could use it as a comb over. Yeah. I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't need it, Greg. <laughs> He's at risk of a, a birds getting in there for nesting season, so yeah. hopefully it'll yeah, be we off. Need, we need the eggs. Yeah, he can't sleep on the patio. No. <laughs> well, Lynn, He's the you're looking out of the kitchen anyway. Lynn, I wanted to invite you to go on our field trips with us if you like, or even uh, join the camera club if you're try having a hard time finding ways to get out and things to do. Join us. That sounds fun. Yeah, this is really. Do you guys do field trips? Is that what I was hearing earlier? Or? Yes, we yeah. do. We have. Oh, nice, nice. We we have a special price for photojournalists, like a thousand a year. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that was a penny more than I made my whole career. I think. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
But now that we're so doing everything by virtual, you don't have to leave Lompoc. You connect to two days a week, no, two nights a month, and uh, that can work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's fun. I was fun seeing everybody up before. So. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. where was that? Um, gardens or where was? Oh, Garden Gardens. Yeah, Girl that was nice. Yeah, it used to be. Yeah. yeah. We got kicked out. So you guys have a trip coming up. Everybody uh, did. So you're going oh, well. for horsetail um, falls Pinnacles, in Yosemite that, in that's February. Be a good place. And then they uh, were going to do the uh, oh. Point St. Louis uh, Lighthouse in March. And and the Pinnacles. And the Pinnacles. Well, we're, we're just keep planning to get take a trip to Pinnacles, now. but yeah, uh, yeah. Nice. When are Pinnacles again? Is that March? Well, Right. Uh huh. It might be a little early for flowers. Depends whether or not we get any rain this week, this coming week. Exactly. So it might be wanting to go out and um, there's an old ranch house that I want to check out there that I hadn't uh, known about. It so depends. Saw you, something online. Are you going in on the eastern side or the western side? The eastern side, because the balcony, at least right now, the, all the caves are closed. And on the east side or the west side, I really like the balconies um, hike. But since we can't do that, I think the the uh, eastern eastern side is is the way to go. Yeah, and they that's because they don't want people crowded in the cave caverns. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. But sometimes it's bat related too. And if it's wet, it can be wet in there if it's raining. Mm, okay. Mm. We always have fun on our field trips. No matter if the photography conditions are good or not, we always have a good time. And no matter how many cars break down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always it's fun before. to shoot the same subject and then compare how everyone saw it differently. And yeah. That's fun. We push each other. And we learn from each other. I took a couple of architectural adult ed classes way back when, and it was so it was always a treat to see what people did. So, yeah. Uh, how many people cool are going to uh, Yosemite? Don't everybody raise your hand at once. I think it's just uh, Larry and Cheryl and Penny and Ed right now. Right, that's all I know. I would love to go. Uh, when is when is uh, Yosemite Cheryl, from again? Larry, where are you cats planning on staying for Yosemite? Well, we're we're treating ourselves and staying at the Awani. Okay, so you'll be staying in the valley. Yeah. Yeah, because the last <laughs> I read, which was today, uh, the Yosemite Valley is essentially closed except for daylight hours. I think they're kicking everybody out at five p.m. So unless right. you're staying in the valley. You're not going to be around for uh, Horsetail Falls show. <coughs> so well, you think you think if we were staying at the Awani, we'd be able to see the Horsetail Falls? Is that in the valley? Yeah. Well, then yeah. Yeah. <coughs> well, I I don't know if they're going to honor our camping reservations because they've been canceling that because of lockdown. Yeah. The official word also for for our camping is that all the campgrounds in Yosemite Valley are closed. That's what it said today, but we haven't received a notice that uh, they're, you know, turning us away. So uh, it might just be closed for people that are trying to make new reservations. You know, they haven't already made them. We went to uh, South Rim of Grand Canyon a few months ago, and <coughs> a huge campground, Matter Campground, is quite extensive. I don't know how many sites they have. There must be well over a hundred, if not two hundred, and uh, there might have been half a dozen or a dozen of us staying in the <clears throat> campground. They decided to honor the people that had already made reservations before they got around to shutting it down. It was it was an error. They meant to close it down and they didn't do it. They like everybody else except for our good friend Greg Davna. Nobody <clears throat> maintains their websites. So suddenly they realized we got all these reservations coming in from the website. And they uh, shut it off, but they did honor our reservation. And they might be doing something similar for Yosemite Valley, but we have not received a notice that, uh, you know, don't plan on coming because we're going to turn you away. So we might still have a reservation there. 
I think if you're at the Iwani Hotel, though, you're probably you're probably good to go for sure. Um, Lynn, I have a question for you. Sure. You were you, you said you're using all the newspapers, uh, camera equipment. So you're starting fresh. What did you decide? What kind of system did you decide to go with? Well, kind of. I stayed with my familiar stuff. So I've got a, a Nikon D five hundred. And my other camera that was still sort of lingering was a D7100. I've got those. Uh, I've got um, their new uh, um, 70 to 200 28. That's that's awesome. Um, that's usually my kind of go to lens on stuff. But I um, I also have a what is it a 17 to 55 28. It's a uh, the 500 is a, a crop sensor. So I, I like the speed of that. That's I do a lot of sports, so I need that quick turnover. So um, I've tried to stay away from full frames just because I know I'll love it if I get one. So I don't want to get one and you know have to deal with the storage. So so that's kind of been tough. But um, someday we'll see. Um, I'm still looking at that mirrorless thing someday. So we'll see. I'll dump everything, I suppose, if Nikon's still around. And I got a fourteen two eight too. That's that's a fun thing. So, yeah, I did some some different kind of portraiture stuff with that too. So, but um, I've got a friend who's trying to convince me to get one of their. It's more of a prosumer lens, but it's like a seventeen to four hundred, something like that. I don't know. I've I've not been too crazy on the variable aperture lenses, but uh, I don't know. I I need something long, and he gets some real nice pictures out of it. So. That might be I, was, I was thinking of buying the Sigma 60 to 600 nice. and um, I've read some good reviews on it because I've got some different, you know, I've got some different fast lenses, but they're so heavy. And if I want to take, you know, the range yep. that goes from 60 to, to 600, that's two lenses. And if I want to shoot from like 24 to 60, that's the third. And then all of a sudden I can't take. I can't take all those pictures because that's too much gear for me to carry. So I've been thinking about getting the 6600 and and lightening up on the other ones. I don't know. Yeah, the 28 to, 28 to 200 Nikon, really super cheap lens. Hmm. Not the best quality, but man, it was so light and easy to use. And it's just, I used it everywhere for, you know, just quick shoots. It didn't take up a lot of space and it was super light. Which one is Which that? It's a 28 to 200. Yeah. It's, you know, it costs like maybe two hundred dollars, two hundred and fifty bucks, and you know, price was good. But you know, yeah, it's not the sharpest, but it, yeah, it'd you know, be cool. It was, it was decent. Yeah, it, it's hard because you you want to. Camera's no good if you're not carrying it. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of I love that seventy to two hundred. But, just... but uh, you know, just being able to yeah. take it some places. I went to uh, one. Uh, uh, Adobe conference and they had this uh, concert and they were, said no long lenses. So I brought that. And, oh, they, that's not a long lens. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got in. Good. Whatever you have. <laughs> the best equipment is the equipment you have with you. Yeah, I was just my phone most <laughs> often <stopping> lately. <laughs> Well, I think it was mean of the Santa Maria yeah, team not to give you that 600 lens. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's, it's not right. So yeah. That was the pandemic lens, so I couldn't get close enough to anybody. So that was break out the big glass. So that was that was nice. But yeah. Um, is that the lens you use when you go kayaking? Hmm? Lens that you go when you go kayaking. It depends oh, on what kayaking. I'm no, no, not me. No. Depends what I'm. <laughs> what, depends oh, what I want to shoot. Um, uh, like Monday, I went out with my daughter. She was leaving for uh, LA uh, Tuesday, so she wanted to see some otters. So we went to Morro Bay. So I brought a 400 millimeter. Put my camera on DX sensor, and. Top, top because I figured we'd be really far away from them, and they're popping up on around her boat, touching her boat, wanting to see what she's doing, and I couldn't focus because they were too close. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. They, they were just all over the place on Monday. I got a few shots, but I wish I'd gotten some with coming up around her boat, but I just couldn't focus close enough. 
Um, so, so, go ahead. I, I, I take, you know, sometimes I'll take a wide angle, sometimes I'll take a long. <laughs> Mostly I'll take a, what is that, a 24 to 70 icon. Uh, just a mid range. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to say that I, uh, that uh, Lacanti photo I made, I, I made that with my phone. Phones work. Yeah. Right? It, 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 yes. it, the phone can work really well at night if you've got if you, if your light is okay, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't disqualify it, even at knowing that. I think you're okay. <laughs> Good to know. We won't think that much less of you. <laughs> <laughs> Penny, is your backdrop image that one I took of you at Death Valley? Um, no, it's one I think I took of you. Somebody really? I, like, well, I look at I. Oh, yeah, that is me. I've got one that looks almost exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> Gee, Greg, I didn't know you know you were that small. Uh, oh, look at that! That's Penny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know her just like the image you got. <laughs> Very cool. similar. Yeah. You sweat each other. Were you guys? Were you sharing your sweatshirts or what? <laughs> no, we were just both, you know, not, not on different sand dunes at the same time, and she, we were doing mutual, mutual pictures, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that was a great trip, by the way. How'd she get out there without any footprints? We have to walk for a while. Ah. Yeah. She got somebody to the trail and flew about, over there. Somebody talked about yeah. uh, vehicle problems on field trips. And on that one, there were three vehicles and each one of them had a problem. Yeah. Our uh, heating system crapped out on our camper. Oh, no. And so we were dealing with that the day that we were supposed to go through areas that Penny and I had not yet seen. So we still haven't seen them. And then the next day, or the next morning, uh, Greg was having issues with some strange noise coming out of the front end of his car, like one of his wheels was going to fall off. And then we were up at uh, some mine, I don't remember the name of it, and uh, Larry's truck a hose came off and he had water pouring all over the ground. Hi. <laughs> and uh, so I says, well, I got water. I can yeah. hook up with water if you've got a way to secure your hose. And he says, well, you know, so I got the water going. We topped off his radiator and he had a bloody twist tie to seal his hose out of that. Well, that's going to last about 20 seconds. Well, he got all the way down the grade into Furnace Creek <laughs> to get a real hose clamp. He didn't have any trouble. So uh, it worked out all right for all of us, but it was, oh. uh, <laughs> well, it was an adventure. And every trip was an adventure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody been to Oceano lately to see the uh, butterflies? Do we have a lot of butterflies or not this year? Uh, no, not many. No, not many. I I even went to the one. Oh gosh, what's the other one? Oh shoot, what one? Galita? Galita? Oh, Galita, Galita. There's one in Galita. The Gaviota. One of the two yeah. of them. There's one there too. There is none there. Oh, none. There's usually quite a few of them in Arroyo Grande, where the that footbridge is, that little uh, park down along the creek. Yeah, those trees. Quite often, when you go in there, those trees can be full of butterflies as well. So over by uh, Old Town, AG with the uh, yeah, the Old Town, yeah. Where the the, the green bridge are and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The bridge. Where the, where the footbridge is. There's that park, a little park down there in the yeah. riverbed. And oftentimes in those trees, there's a lot of uh, butterflies. Oh, oh, wow! Well. Have you been there lately to see if they're there this year? I'll be there tomorrow. Well, let us know. Let me know. I don't know if anyone else cares, but I do. Okay. They say that the numbers <laughs> keep on diminishing. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I actually heard that they're close to getting extinct. Yeah. Yep. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. When I moved up here in '76. Uh, those trees were just in Pismo were covered with the darn things. Yes. Just covered. Yeah. Um, you couldn't you, you couldn't see the leaves on the trees. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've seen it like that, and I've seen it with lots fewer. <laughs> we had them um, in our yard a couple years ago. We have milkweed, and um, 
we didn't we saw I saw a couple of butterflies this year, but I I didn't see any cocoons. Or... Hmm. I mean, I see them all winter long here in Napomo, but just one or two as they flutter through, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna if be you plant um, milkweed, out. If you plant milkweed, make sure I can eat. Bye. Oh, bye bye. Thank you. Make sure you plant the native milkweed. There's a tropical milkweed, and they say that will harm them. So don't plant the tropical milkweed if you if you decide to get milk. Get the ones that Oceano sells. There, yeah, the nursery will tell you which ones are native. However, you you'll get a lot of aphids. They attract aphids like a magnet. But, well, I, I know what weed is, but I'm not sure what milkweed is. So. <laughs> it's weed that's been soaked overnight in milk. Oh. <laughs> Don't give the butterflies your weed, Jim. It's not good for them. <laughs> <laughs> they fly kind of funny. They already fly funny. <laughs> thanks for your efforts, Lane. Oh, thanks, Tony. Good to see Thank everybody. You. Yeah, we're glad much. you joined us. We really appreciate your judging. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Keep up the great work. Gosh, that's that's fun to fun and inspiring. So well good. We hope we inspired you. Yes. yes. Well, I'm gonna sign off. Um everyone have a uh, a very nice evening. Good night. Okay. You, too. Good night. Good night. you too. Bye. 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 Yes. Thank you all. Bye -bye. Okay. All right, bye, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, thanks, Lynn. Thanks. At you soon. Yeah. Um.